Morning, Internet. I've left town. I'm not in Kuala Lumpur, at least not at the moment. I came, I've come back out to Bandar Sri Damansara, where I used to live and work, which is about, I think, about 20 km's northwest of Kuala Lumpur. And this is a real journey of rediscovery here. A lot of this stuff looks familiar, but there have been a lot of changes. The MRT, which was under construction for the entire time that I lived here, from 2013 until 2020, at least the part of it that gets here has been completed. Some of the shops that I have frequented are closed. But when I, the one I really want to see, my favorite one, is the subway. I want to see if the subway shop is still there. I think they're not yet re ready yet for the lunchtime crowd. But basically, it's the same shop. Colors are a little bit different. They have some new signs up. But it's the same place I remember. Every morning for five years, I would come here and grab a six-inch breakfast sub before heading up to my office. Another errand that I have to do while I'm out here is close my bank account. I have a Malaysian bank account at CIMB, and I had that as a result of my working here. You know, when you get a work permit, you're allowed to open bank accounts and things like that but I haven't had a work for, permit for four years, so the bank account has been sort of sitting dormant. I really have, shouldn't have it anymore, and I think there's only like 200 ringgit in it, so I'll probably just clean it out, close the account, and put that into the history books. Try to get in there, in here before the lunchtime rush. You can see the bank behind me. Well, that was a relatively painless trip. I got some prescriptions that I needed and I closed my bank account. Now, some of you are probably wondering how I got prescriptions in Malaysia. Well, if you watch my videos before, you know that I used to live here. I used to work here. In fact, this is where I used to work, back at Ativo Plaza. And I used to go to a clinic there. It's right in the building. So everybody there knew me. And I'm old enough to be on Medicare in the United States. But when you travel, I tried to get a long-term prescription that would last me until I returned. I think it was uh, a six-month supply. But Medicare... And I didn't really want to go into too many details when I called them up about it. But they would only give me a three month, they called it a vacation waiver or something like that. Some, you know, fancy insurance term. I wasn't too worried about it because I knew that when I got to Malaysia, I could probably get the prescription drugs that I needed at my former workplace, which is exactly what happened. Now, is, that, is it supposed to be that easy to do that? Probably not. Uh, I would advise that if you are planning on an extended trip and you do take prescription medicines, that probably, unless you have an ex a situation exactly like mine, you probably should make other arrangements. But that's how I did it. And closing my bank account was also a piece of cake. Every now and then I see this in some of the travel forums that I'm a member of. People ask how you can get a bank account in a foreign country. Well, the simple answer is you can't. And I, I should make a video about this because 
I do know quite a bit about this process. But generally speaking, if you just want a bank account and you're a typical typical citizen of another country, you know, you don't walk around with a billion dollars in your checking account, things like that. You can't get a bank account in another country. Or if you can, it's it's kind of a shady thing. It's not really officially okay, even though some people have pulled it off. The only way I have a bank account here in Malaysia is because when I used to work here, I used to have to have or have to get a work permit and a multiple entry visa. And when the bank saw that I had a work permit, then it was okay for them to allow me to open a bank account. So that's where I got my bank account or how I got it. Another thing you want to keep in mind is that foreign banks are reluctant to open bank accounts for U.S. citizens. And the reason why is because the United States government requires lots of reporting to be done in foreign banks where U.S. citizens hold money or accounts or banking privileges. And it's just a pain in the neck. If they can avoid it, then if, if foreign banks can avoid giving U.S. citizens, a typical U.S. citizen, which is what I was, I wasn't making millions of dollars when I lived here. I was just, you know, making a normal wage. So there's no real payoff for a bank to give somebody like me a bank account. So they're reluctant to do it. But my work permit, I guess, changed their mind a little bit anyway. Getting across the street at this junction is as hard as ever. There are no crosswalks, there are no stoplights or pedestrian lights or anything like that. But it's not really, there is a sidewalk on the other side of the street that if I were actually walking from point to point in the ring, as you can see on the map, Bandar Sri Damansari is surrounded by a ring road. I would normally be walking on the other side of the street on that sidewalk. On the side of the street where I was, there is a sidewalk, but there's also no way to cross streets unless you just run for it. So that's what I did. What I'm gonna do now, this is a real treat. I'm taking the MRT, which is a brand new, and I think I mentioned this a little while ago, a brand new, shall we say, perk to this area. The MRT, which is known as the Putra Jaya Line, goes all the way out to the National Administrative Capital in Putra Jaya, but it passes right through Bandar Sri Damansara. Now, it's not finished all the way out to Putra Jaya. It only goes I think about halfway, they're not done with the whole thing, but the part that I'm using today to get back into the city, back into Kuala Lumpur, is done. And it's about a 40 minute ride, and as soon as I get there, hopefully I'll have some recording from on the train. Man, it is much quieter in here. I'm so, so happy, even though I'm walking pretty much in a concrete tunnel, it's much more pleasant because it's so much quieter than out near the road. Anyhow, one of the guards at Ativo Plaza did not really like the idea of me recording video while I was there. So the stuff that you saw at Ativo Plaza was recorded right before he asked me to stop. I tried to tell him that I used to work there. You know, there's just a story there's no real reason the fact, by the fact that I used to work there why that would allow me to record video or allow me to do anything, really. And as I thought, as I expected, he, wasn't, he really wasn't interested. So then I tried to wow him with my limited ability to speak Malay. That worked a little bit. We had a good time. These stations have only been open for about maybe a year and a half. 
maybe two years, I don't know, somewhere around there. But when I finished my contract in 2018, they weren't running yet. And they're gigantic. These stations are just huge. I think the cost of this is about four, maybe five ringgit. It's a brand new train, goes through some areas that are not really populated yet, and the train is not as well used as some of the ones that are closer into town. But it's a very nice train, as you'll see in a moment. My train is due in two minutes, platform two. And what I'm going to do is just ride the Putrajaya line down to the Kajang. Oh, I forget the name of the other one. The Kajang line, I forget, it has two names to it. We're going to go to the beginning of that one and then take that one into town. I think this is our train right here. This is where we switch trains. Kwasa Damansara is the last stop on one end of the Putrajaya line. So you have to get off at this station and get on the Kajang line, which will be the last train I get on and get off somewhere downtown. I haven't decided where yet. Okay, I just got off the MRT at the Museum Nagara stop which is the same thing as KL Central it's just a little bit of a walk and now instead of walking back to my apartment I'm going to take the monorail instead I've been standing up and walking all morning I think I've had enough walking for one day well I just got off the monorail at the Bukit Bintang station and as soon as I did that, I realized I didn't have to. I could have, I didn't have to change trains. I could have stayed on the MRT and rode it all the way to the Bukit Bendong stop there. But it's funny, the monorail and LRT stations, after having used them so often for the past couple of years, the schedule or the, not the schedule, but the map is embedded in my brain. I can think about where I need to go and exactly which trains I need to be on and which ones I need to uh, change to. But the MRT isn't part of that system yet. I have a vague idea of where everything goes, but I don't have a, an understanding of the MRT like I do the monorail LRT lines. Okay, well, now I'm back in the Bukit Bintang area. And that completes my fabulous adventure out to Bandar Sri Damansara. It was really nice to get out there and see my old stomping ground. If it was only for a couple of hours. So I hope you'll stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Hey, folks, remember. If you subscribe to this channel, all of your wildest dreams will come true. I'll show myself out.